Amen. It's one thing to sing, it's another thing to live. Amen? So it's just as easy as singing, but uh, we need to be committed to, uh, He will never leave us nor forsake us. Uh, what's our testimony? And uh, we need to be faithful to our friend who is so faithful to us. At this time, Junior Church can be dismissed uh, to go downstairs. And uh, I can tell they're anxious about that. Did you forget your purse, Haley? I can tell it because it's bright pink. So it kind of stands out there, doesn't it? She came rest, dressed in a real cute white sweater and hoodie and that bright pink purse, and it sure stood out. And uh, it's got to be new. She carries it with pride. All right, we're in, in uh, Romans chapter 3. I was just so caught up with her pink purse that I uh, will take a return. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Is there someone that would sit with Miss Marie and help? Uh, maybe you guys can look together on the, in the Bible. Help her with that. Someone willing to do that? Okay. Amen. Thank you, Miss Darlene. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter number 3. We're going to begin in verse number 1. We've uh, just been going through the, the book of Romans. Sunday morning we have a message from it. Sunday evening we read rest of the chapter and then go on to the next. And, and uh, the uh, book of Romans, Paul writing to the people in Rome, uh, just a burden to reach Jewish. He always had a, a burden for his own people. He was Jewish and he had a burden for them. God called him as a, a, a preacher to the Gentiles and he was an apostle to the Gentiles, but he had such a burden for the Jewish people as well. And every town he would go to, he would go to the synagogue first and he would go there to try to uh, share the gospel with the Jews first. And, and then when they would, uh, would uh, forsake and, and deny Christ and sometimes uh, threaten his life, uh, then he would go to the Gentiles and, and preach to them. And uh, that's what God called him to do. And and uh, just had had a, a burden to uh, reach the Jewish people. Well, you can sense that as you start out Romans chapters one, two and three, because he he's just a very, uh, you know, God uses the man. And and uh, it is God's word, God speaking, because I believe God has a burden for the Jewish people. And uh, uh, and so uh, chapters one and two, he spends much detail in just sharing with them. Uh, that they're lost and need to be saved too, and uh, and and so uh, as we've uh, looked at in in in, in chapter two verse one, thou art inexcusable, uh, and so uh, in other words, the Jewish people without excuse as well, and uh, of course, uh, just as Gentiles are lost, Jews are lost, and uh, they need to be saved too, and and of course, all of their religion. A lot of times, people you know will tell you, uh, I'm okay. I keep the Ten Commandments. I'm okay. I, uh, you know, I, uh, uh, I uh, uh, keep the golden rule. Uh, and it's amazing the people that know. They never read the Bible, but they know the golden rule. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. I live by the old rule, so I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. You know, that's what the Jews, they would say, I'm, I'm Jewish. And uh, I keep the feasts. And, and I go to uh, the, uh, uh, the synagogue and, and uh, you know, I, uh, uh, I uh, teach my kids the Old Testament law and uh, Matthew, I mean, uh, Matthew, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus and Deuteronomy, the first five books of the Bible, which is known as the law. I, I teach uh, those to my uh, to my kids and and we try to live those and have been doing that all the time. These Gentiles, they don't know anything. They don't keep those feasts. They don't keep the Sabbath. Uh, they, uh, uh, you know, they have their own laws. They don't follow the laws of God and and uh, there's no hope for them. On top of that, I got Jewish blood in my veins. I'm God's chosen people. And and uh, and so uh, uh, so I'm OK. And so he's trying to share with them in Romans chapters one and two. You're not OK. Uh, chapter three, well known for its uh, verse. Uh, and uh, just a short verse, but such an important verse. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us. When Jesus came to this world, he didn't come to this world to die for the Gentiles. He came and died for everyone. Jew and Gentile. And, uh, uh, you know, to, to share with people that when Jesus came, uh, if you are good enough to get to heaven, then he didn't die for you. Uh, why? Because you don't need him. 
You're a, such a good person. He, he came and died for the world. The Bible says he was the propitiation for our sins, not ours only, but the sins of the whole world. God is desiring every single person to be saved. Uh, God died for every one of us. And and uh, and so it comes. And, and of course, the Jews would would naturally ask, well, wait a minute. All these years we've been trying to keep these feasts. We've been trying to keep these commandments, been trying to keep the word of God, been circumcised, all of these things. And you're telling us none of this did us any good. None of this did us any good. Uh, well, Jesus, uh, he, he's sharing, well, it didn't didn't save you. Uh, because uh, the Bible says not by works, lest any man should boast. It's uh, we can't save ourselves. None of our works. The Bible says all of our works are as, as uh, uh, are, uh, all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags uh, in his sight. What you go out with greasy hands, whatever you touch is going to get grease on it. No matter how good you try to do, it's going to get grease on it. And and we're sinners and, and whatever we do is going to be tainted by that sin. And and he says all those works and things. So they come and say, you mean uh, all of that didn't do us any good? You mean teaching our children from their youth up the word of God and and uh, trying to keep those feasts and and uh, being circumcised? All those things didn't do us any good. And of course, uh, chapter three starts out. It did do you some good. It did do you some good. It is profitable. It didn't save you uh, because works can't save you. Uh, and uh, and so uh, notice, if you would, in chapter three and verse one, uh, with that background, just kind of a short summary of chapters one and two. Uh, but chapter three, the Bible says, what advantage then hath the Jew? Uh, what good did it do us then? What good did it do us? What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there in uh, of circumcision? Why did we go through all that then? Why did we go through all that then? Notice the answer. Much. So you'd ask, what profit is there in it? What advantage was it? The answer is much. Every way. Chiefly because that unto them, the Jews were committed to. The oracles of God. What a, what a blessing to have the word of God. Uh, you know, the things in the Bible, you cannot get any place else. The things that are given, if God had not given us his word, these are things man would never come to on his own. This is the mysteries of God contained right here. Uh, and uh, in fact, in Job, he goes through a, a, disserta- a, a, a discourse and he's he's just saying, where could you find it? You could deep to the go to the deepest part of the uh, the mountain. You can go to the highest you know, place. You can go to the bottom of the ocean. Uh, any place you would never discover the things that are in the Bible. If God hadn't given them to us in America. Praise the Lord. Uh, because of the Bible being a part of America since its foundation, uh, you can find portions of scriptures and sayings from the word of God in all kinds of places. Uh, but if we hadn't had the word of God, we'd have none of that. And and uh, praise the Lord for uh, the word of God. And the Jews are saying, well, what advantage then? If we were given the commandments, but the commandments still didn't save us, what advantage? And he says much, uh, much. What a, a privileged people that have the word of God. You know, Christians today are more advantaged than Jews. Because we not only have the Old Testament, we have the whole complete word of God. Uh, and sometimes you might say, what advantage then? There's people that say that. What, what advantage then? Uh, why, why should I learn the Bible then? If keeping God's laws aren't going to save me, why should I learn the things that are in the Bible then? If, if, if keeping them is not going to save me. Jesus Christ is a Savior. Uh, understand... Uh, All you need to get you into heaven is a faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, And uh, if you come to a point and acknowledge your sin and confess that before him and ask him to be your savior, the Bible says, whosoever calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So as people say, well, then I can just set this thing aside, right? Sorry for calling it the thing. Then I can just set this miraculous word of God aside then, right? And go on and live my life because I'm saved. Uh, I've, I've heard those that say, uh, you know, of those that believe in eternal security and through the mind of a man. You mean once you accept Christ as your savior, you're saved regardless? Yes. The Bible says that he becomes my savior. I'm not my savior anymore. He's now my savior. He's guaranteed to save me. Uh, well, then you can just go out and kill somebody, right? Isn't that the first thing on your mind? Uh, you hear people say, well, you can just go out and kill somebody then, right? And, and uh, you know, but uh, people are saying, well, th- then that means you don't have to keep the Ten Commandments. Not to get to heaven. Uh, 
But you ever met a Christian out on the street someplace just miserable? Uh, life is upside down. Uh, just, a, I mean, living a, a wretched life. And you, you try to share Christ with them. They give you a testimony that they're saved. Uh, why is their life so wretched? Because they take this thing and they set it, this, this miraculous word of God, they take it and they set it aside. Say, well, I'm saved then. That's all I need, right? Uh, you want a miserable life? Be a Christian and live contrary to this book. Be a Christian and don't lo- open this book. Don't read this book. Don't learn from it. Uh, just uh, just say, uh, Lord, thank you for saving me. One day when I get to heaven, I'll, I'll sure be happy. But this life's just a miserable place. You know, the Bible says there's a joy of the Lord that he can give you, uh, that you can, you can walk every day with joy. Even with miserable circumstances in your life, uh, you can have that peace and that joy uh, that, uh, that is missing. It's found right here in this book. But a Christian might ask, what advantage is it then me that I go to church and, and uh, you know, uh, try to, uh, to uh, practice the things? Because these are contrary to nature. We have a sin nature. And our nature doesn't like to do the things that are contained in this. And sometimes it's hard to do those things. And, and uh, simple truths of God. And, and yet how much better it makes our life when, we, uh, when we're willing to be obedient to the Lord. And, and so the Jews come, they, uh, the question is, what advantage is then? Uh, what advantage is then? And of course the response, and I lost my place there, but uh, you have it, but Ro- Romans uh, chapter number 3 again. Uh, what advantage is it? Is the question. Uh, notice the answer much. Much advantage. There's much advantage in, in, in reading the word of God. Much advantage in knowing the word of God. Much advantage in practicing the word of God. What profit? Verse 5. Much every way chiefly. Because that unto them were committed. The oracles of God. Verse 3, for what if some did not believe? Verse 3, for what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Uh, What if I just set aside the Bible and I don't read it and I don't know it? You know, ignorance is bliss, right? Uh, You'll have a miserable life apart from him. Uh, you know, what, what, what a blessing to know Jesus Christ and be saved. I, I praise the Lord that I'm saved. Uh, but how miserable your life can become when you don't fellowship with him. Uh, and uh, I, I encourage you, don't, don't just open this book when you come to church. We need to every day spend some time with him. What a difference in your morning. I mean, your day is going to be if you could just take a few minutes a day and just spend in, in, in praying and reading the Bible and thinking about the Lord Jesus Christ. It would, it would make your day different. Uh, if uh, we could do that and and uh, be able to honor and look into his word and and, and much profit the oracles of God you say well if some did not believe shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect the truth is the truth whether you believe it or not the truth is the truth whether you believe it or not and uh uh, you know the uh, the uh, I mean there, there's truths. It doesn't matter whether you believe it or not. I uh, you know I uh, uh, it's still gonna gonna play out in your life. You say, well, I didn't know better. It's still gonna make your life miserable. Well, I didn't know better. I remember uh, uh, went down to my uh, sister and brother-in-laws and and uh, took the kids down and we were uh, we were uh, uh, you know uh, just uh, on vacation and we spent some time. They got a pool in their their backyard. And uh, and so uh, out there in that pool, and we were we were swimming and having fun, and I think it was uh, it was uh, Sarai. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, we were out there, and was a, was a little girl at the time, and and uh, uh, she's still a little girl to me, but uh, uh, now she's a soldier. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, she's still a little girl to me. But but uh, anyway, she she was out there, and she's just watching as as uh, you know her, her older brother Seth and and I were playing in the pool and whatever and. And uh, and and also uh, the, the the nephews were, were playing in the pool and and of course she's just a little toddler I think she was a year old or two years just just learned to walk and and uh, you know whatever and and uh, uh, and so uh, so we we we, we were pl- having fun in the water and we were, got out of the water she she she's thinking you know the eyes of toddler that looks like fun wow you can get in the water and float around like that and all that and that was like fun so what she do she walked over to the and walked off the edge she's gonna jump in that water and play. You know what happened? She sunk. She sunk. In fact, if, if, if her uh, brother is only a couple of years older than her, if her brother hadn't pulled her out, 
uh, she would have drowned. Uh, why? Because there's the truth is the truth, whether you believe it or not. She just believed, no, I can walk on water. Uh, you know, they're around floating now around out there and whatever, and I can just float around out there too. And and uh, and so what did we do? We got her floaties, didn't we? Uh, but uh, but uh, she uh, she uh, uh, you know she just thought, well, they're out there playing in the water, and and uh, uh, you know you, you you step off into the water, you just sink. Peter said, Lord, if you bid me to come out on that water, I can walk on the water. And, of course, he, he uh, you know, Jesus, uh, you know, enabled him because we serve a God that can go against nature. Amen. But Peter got his eyes off the Lord. And what happened? He started to sink. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the, there's laws and there's truths that uh, that uh, whether you believe them or not. Uh, they're still true. And uh, whether whether you believe them or not. I uh, was reading about some truths I shared with the, uh, the choir because we were eating and we went out to eat after we uh, were uh, singing everything. Just had some fellowship and and uh, but uh, was was just sharing, you know, that there's there's a, a truth that, that people don't believe. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, the, the truth is. If you want to lose weight, you got to eat less. People don't want to believe that. They'll try exercise, they'll try diet pills, they'll try special diet foods everything else because they want to keep eating the same but lose weight and and so they don't want to believe that you eat less and you know there's things that uh that uh, whether you believe them or not they're true and and uh and so uh so there's there's uh you know secrets to uh the secret to losing weight i had to come up with a tv commercial and sell it for thousands of dollars or whatever eat less eat less but uh, uh you know uh, anyway uh, uh and they uh, uh, the uh, the the point of uh, you know again there's there's truths and praise the lord god's given us those truths we have those truths the world doesn't know. And they're still reaping the consequences of them, even if they don't know them, because they're truths of God, God who created everything. Uh, you know, he established those truths and God's given us those truths. What advantage is it? What advantages are coming to church? What advantages are reading the Bible? What are the advantages they're trying to practice and live the, 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 the truths that God's given us? Of course, the answer much. Notice verse three, for what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Verse 4, God forbid. God won't let it happen. God's going to uphold his word. Uh, and so he's not going to let you live contrary to his word and still have success. He's not. Uh, why? Because that would just undermine the truths. And uh, you say, well, I want to walk on water like Peter did. I want to defy the, the laws of nature and whatever like Peter did and, and praise the Lord for miracles. And God does that time and time. It just shows his power and his might and, and uh, praise the Lord for that. But, uh, you know, we, uh, uh, we, we want to defy those things all the time. What we, I want to do what I want to do, how I want to do it, when I want to do it, like I want to do it. And I want God to bless it anyway. And, uh, you know, I praise the Lord for the word of God. Verse 4, God forbid, yea, let God be true. But every man a liar. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. I'd just like to look at the statement let God be true. Let God be true. Primarily looking at that word let. Let God be. Wait a minute, God is true. What do you, I don't need to let God do anything. You need to let God do something, Bob? Uh, he does what he wants to do, doesn't he? Uh, but the Bible says, let God be true. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. I, I pray for the message. And uh, Lord, just in, in the introduction, thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, for the promises and the blessings you've given us. And uh, Lord, not only have you given us your word, uh, you've completed it, that we have the Old and New Testament. But Lord, as we look at your word today, uh, we have the completed word and uh, not only that, but we have your Holy Spirit to be able to guide us and lead us and teach us that we might understand uh, your truths. Uh, Lord, if we could just live them in our life, how much different uh, life would be uh, as a child of God. I pray, Father, that you would just work in the message this morning. Those that don't know you as their savior, uh, Father, they might be saved. Uh, but those of us that are saved, uh, Lord, that we would uh, just uh, be committed uh, this week and and uh, Lord just uh, rejoice this morning that we serve a God who give us the truths of all creation I pray father that you just bless the time together in Jesus name amen 
Now, I just want to read some verses before we actually turn to some verses and and uh, just in preparation for uh, the uh, two point message, two points. Isn't that something? Only two points in the message. So that's something to look forward to when we get to it. But uh, no, uh, but just a, a few scriptures to look at. Uh, and uh, so don't look these up. I'm just going to read them to you, but you can write them down to look up later. Uh, but uh, Psalms 138 two, the Bible says, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. That was magnified thy word above all thy name. There's none higher than the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet Jesus said, I've taken and I've magnified my word above my name. Uh, that's how uh, what a blessing the word of God is. Uh, John 10, 35, the Bible says the scriptures cannot be broken. That was Jesus's promise. And I'd like to remind you when he said that uh, they had the Old Testament in Jesus's day, the same Old Testament we have today. They had it. And he said the scriptures cannot be broken. Uh, this this Bible is true from Genesis to Revelations. Uh, every jot and tittle, tittle, every dotting of the I and crossing of the T. The word of God is uh, is uh, from from beginning. To end. God has has established his word uh, in, Je in in Jesus's day. He confirmed the Old Testament. He confirmed everything in the Old Testament is true. Uh, and, and so if you don't agree with that, you have to ask. You have to answer to Jesus. Because he's the one that said uh, the scriptures cannot be broken. And the scriptures they had in that day was the Old Testament. When the Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Paul did not have the originals. Some people believe only the originals were inspired and man corrupted it through time. But uh, uh, he did not have the originals. He had copies of copies of copies of copies. And, and uh, you know, God taught them all scripture is given by inspiration. of God, God breathed and is profitable. For doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Uh, there, uh, you know, uh, of course, the old, the, the old Testament, the Jews had the Old Testament. What advantage of it and, and much? Because uh, why? You have the oracles of God. So John 10, 35, the Bible says the scriptures cannot be broken. Matthew 5, 18 says, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass. As far as I know, they're still here. Amen. Uh, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall not in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Luke 16, 17 says it's easier for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle of the law to fail. Uh, this is the word of God. And as Christians, uh, we, uh, uh, we, we have the word of God. The only problem is we've got to learn it. Uh, we got to open it. We got to study it. We got to read it. We got to get to know, uh, you know, God through his word. And it's a living book. God will speak to you through his word. Uh, the Holy Spirit of God will reveal things to you. Uh, what a privilege as uh, Christians that uh, that we have. The Bible says, uh, I hath not seen. Nor ear heard. Neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But. They have be, been revealed unto us. They have been revealed unto us by His Spirit. The natural man understandeth not the things of, the, uh, of God. The lost people, those that have not trusted Christ as their Savior, they can't understand the things in these books. They, they look at it differently than we do. Uh, it says, but the spiritual man. You know, the Bible says He judgeth all things. Uh, that uh, through the Holy Spirit, we have the ability to be able to understand this wonderful, marvelous book that God has given. And so the passage says here in chapter number two, in verse number four, the statement we're looking at, God forbid, yea, notice, let God be true. That's the message this morning. Let God be true. The word let means to lease we would use the word release to let means to permit to allow to admit it's amazing how god created us with a free will have you ever heard somebody make the statement i i just can't believe the things in the bible well that's your problem because God gave you a free will. You can believe what you want to believe. People believe all kinds of foolish things, don't they? 
it's amazing the the uh, things in, in religion and and uh, superstition and things people have let themselves believe the bible says let god be true it's a decision you have to make uh you're either going to accept that this is the word of god and that these things god has written are for you or you're going to deny it and nobody's going to prove to you any different you know what jesus said he said uh, there they have moses and the prophets let them believe uh let 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 them believe them moses and the prophets and and he says even if one comes back from the dead they won't believe why because they've made a decision in their heart they're not going to believe uh you look at our scientists today uh, why is it they believe in evolution when they've already said, you can read their statements, that they can't prove it? Uh, they're now up to trillions of years. When I was in school, millions of years was a big word. But just like money is no more, uh, you know, we're now a trillion dollar debt. Well, we got trillions of years ago. Trillions and trillions of years ago. Uh, you know, uh, uh, all of a sudden this earth appeared. We don't know how, but it appeared. And uh, little organisms started swimming around the water. Where'd they come from? I don't know. It takes two to have kids right and so uh you know uh, little organisms all of a sudden just appeared they just happened to appear at the same time and and this pool of water and pretty soon they got legs and they crawled up on the land and and you know here we are and you ask them uh, how do you know evolution is true because we're here uh it's much easier to, to believe in a designer who created everything uh and designed it all and uh, why because everything has design it has order there are laws. Somebody put all those laws there. And God, who has given us, it's amazing. The Bible says, let. It's your decision not to believe. Uh, it's still true. And God says, let God be true and all men liars. Uh, your, your error will prove itself out. There's coming a day that you will admit that you were wrong. And that the word of God was right. And uh, uh, the Bible says, let God be true. Second Corinthians 4, 4, the Bible says, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them. Now, that's a good excuse. All oh, the devils just blinded them, right? Notice here, the Bible doesn't stop there. It says, the, the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. That takes away the excuse. Not that the devil has blinded people. God, the devil has blinded those who have made a decision not to believe. And so if you're blinded today, it's because you made a decision not to believe. And now the devil can blind you. He can give you all kinds of excuses and lies and, and uh, things to, uh, to seal your doom. Because you chose not to believe the word of God. These things are true. It's amazing what ma the distance man will go to to not believe the word of God. We've got a messed up world today, don't we? America is not great like it once was. Uh, why? Because now all of a sudden we're, we're going contrary. We set aside the Bible. We're going contrary and making laws and approving things and allowing things to take place uh, that Bible says God says is an abomination to him. And uh, uh, yet we've said, well, uh, you know, that book, it's old fashioned anyway. And and uh, we're so much smarter today. Uh, well, if we're so much smarter today, then why doesn't the world get better? Uh, it's not. Let God be true. The question was asked. Now think about this. This is quite a question. I've thought about it quite a bit. But uh, does honesty, now you consider yourself honest. Uh, I hope we're in a group that considers it. But does honesty require telling the truth or telling what you believe is true? Think about that. If you're truly honest, are you honest because you tell what is true or what you believe is true? Because they are different. Uh, you ever been wrong? Uh, yeah. Everybody here, you've been wrong. Uh, the only thing I can know that is really true is what's in this book. Uh, and if I begin to pick it apart and say, well, I'm not going to believe that, and I'm not going to believe that, you're in trouble. You have no basis to stand on. If you can't believe it all, you can't believe any of it for certain. Who's to say what you're believing is right is wrong and is wrong is right uh, if, if you don't believe all of it? Because God gave it to us. You say, well, the part that I agree with is inspired. Uh, this is the word of God. 
If you start to say, I don't believe parts of the Bible, can you really be certain about your salvation then? That Jesus Christ is the Savior. Can you be really, really certain about anything that's in it? Uh, if uh, we begin to take it. And, but you know, man is, has made a decision that he's not going to believe what God says. And uh, what a mess you can find yourself in when that takes the case. Uh, to let, to lease, to permit, to allow, to admit that God is true. Uh, to admit that God is true. It's a decision you make. Nobody has to prove it to you. Uh, nobody has to prove it to you to make that decision. There's all kinds of things in life you just accept and believe as true. Uh, and no one's ever proved it to you. You just believe it. Look at history. You went through history class. Nobody ever proved that history stuff to you, did they? Did George Washington ever live? You ever met somebody that knew him? Uh, no. You just believe it, don't you? And, and you don't make anybody prove it to you either. I actually went and got to see his house. I even saw his statue. Uh, you say, well, somebody proved it. No, that's just a statue, and that's just the house they say is where George Washington lived. But uh, there's all kinds of things that we, well, why would people lie to you about that? I don't know, but, uh, you know, uh, you, ever, you ever caught somebody lying to you? The only true history is history. I always like that to say. Uh, the only true history is his story. Uh, is the only true history. But, uh, but uh, to be able to know for certain, uh, does it mean men can write down some things that are true? They can. Uh, but the only thing we can be certain of is what we have uh, in the word of God. What advantage is it? Second Peter three, five speaks of a time is going to come when people are going to be willfully or willingly ignorant. Willingly ignorant it says uh, in second Peter three, five for this, they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Uh, it goes back to creation. Uh, willfully ignorant. Or willingly, sorry, willingly ignorant. Uh, it's a choice. Let God be true. What advantage is it then? Well, look at Romans chapter 2 there again in verse number 4. Romans 2, 4. Here's your two points. Romans chapter 3, I'm sorry. Romans chapter 3 and verse number 4. The Bible says, God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that, two points, thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Two things, two points, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings. Doesn't it feel good to be right? Uh, you know, there's been a few times in our marriage that I'm right. I'm always right, but uh, there's a few. No, uh, but there's a few times in our marriage that I am right, and my wife admits it. It's been a few times like that, and boy, what a glorious day! That is such a good day uh, when she says you were right. Most of the time, I find it's the other way around. I'm telling her, I should have listened to you. You were right, and uh, uh, but to be able to say uh, that thou mightest be justified. And I say, I don't believe it's going to be that we can just stand at the great white throne judgment one day and say, ha, I was right, wasn't I? I, I don't think that's what it's talking about. Uh, it's not the joy in knowing that you were right. It's the results, the fruit of being right. There's your but, but it says here, uh, you know, the first point, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings. There's things that I've believed that aren't true. I believed them, but they aren't true. Uh, and in fact, I just now, two days ago, discovered they weren't true. Now, you've probably told me before they weren't true, but uh, I don't know why. I just uh, didn't think about it too much until I was thinking about the message and about those things which are true that I uh, don't believe or whatever. And, and uh, anyway, doing a search on those things, the two things. And uh, Josiah, I have to apologize for teaching you otherwise. Uh, because these are things I've taught my kids. Uh, and, and so two truths uh, or two falsehoods that I thought were true. What's the first one? What have I taught you about eating before you swim? 
Huh? And what? And what? I've always been taught that. Eating before you swim will give you cramps. If you're out there swimming, you'll drown. It's not true. Do you know what? They've scientifically proved it. Uh, I know you're disappointed. Uh, I always teach them that. That way when they go out swimming, I get that second hamburger that they didn't eat. Because uh, they, oh, okay. Uh, or those chips that, you know. Uh, but no. Uh, if you eat too much, no matter what vigorous exercise you get, you'll get sick to your stomach. Uh, so you may get a nauseous feeling when you go out and swim after you eat, if you eat a lot. Uh, but if you eat a moderate amount, just blow it. Sorry, parents. I, I, I just have to. Uh, but I've, I've, you know, I've been teaching that, but they've, they've just proven that that's not, not true. Uh, you know what they say? They say that uh, out, of, uh, out of the drownings uh, that took place, what was the year's? It was this last year or year before last. Quite a few people drowned this last uh, was it last year. I didn't write down the date. It's either last year or the year before that. But they say 1% of those that drowned in, in, in questioning the, uh, the circumstance of uh, 1% actually ate before they got in the water. Because most people believe that if you eat before you go swimming, uh, it's not a good thing, so they don't, uh, you know, do that. But, uh, but uh, one percent of those that drowned, they did find out though. If you drink before you drowned, that's not good. Uh, and uh, forty percent of the drownings, either last year or the year before last, were because of alcohol. Forty percent. Uh, but uh, you know we've uh, just been teaching our kids one uh, you know uh, there uh, if you eat before you swim that's going to give you cramps your body will freeze up on you you can't swim to shore you're just going to sink uh, I've always been taught that that's what I always thought so I pass that on to to my kids never nobody ever had to prove it to me but you know somebody had to be proven to them so they went and did some studies and and uh, you know and and uh, colleges did these uh, you know uh, studies and such and universities and and uh, anyway just in in uh, uh, looking at uh, you know again human anatomy and how you react to it and whatever and and uh, and so uh, but then there was a second one and I wonder how many more are like that but there's a second one uh, have you ever taught your kids now kids close your ears for a minute okay don't listen to this, okay? Because uh, your parents might still want to teach it to you. Have you ever been taught that eating sugar makes kids hyper? It's not true. They've done the studies. It's not true. Sugar doesn't make you hyper. Now, it rots your teeth, so it's still not good. You can still tell your kids don't eat too much sugar. Uh, they, they say usually it's the activities involved with sugar. That cause it. For example, the birthday party. Kids get so excited inside they can't contain it, and and you know those kinds of events that things that partake. Or thinking about getting sugar. Uh, you tell your kids uh, thinking about getting sugar. You tell your kids, uh, you know, uh, uh, we're going to go to the store and get a candy bar. Well, they get so excited. Why? Because our body can get addicted to sugar, and uh, uh, they get so excited about getting that candy bar. And uh, uh, but the actual sugar itself does not make kids hyper. I, I was kind of surprised by that. And and uh, and so I, I can't teach that. But but still, it'll rot their teeth out. It's not good for their health. There's all kinds of, you know, I'm not teaching you to, to give your kids lots of sugar now. But uh, but again, if you, you blame their their disobedience on sugar, that's out the door. Uh, I heard Miss Darlene say some people are allergic to the re red dye. That's where they get, uh, you know, ADHD and all those, uh, you know, uh, uh, conditions that, uh, you know, have it's, it's the, the, the dye that they put in candy sometimes. But, uh, but uh, uh, again, uh, sugar it's itself. And so, uh, so I can't blame that to my kids anymore. Uh, you know, they say, oh, they just had too much sugar to eat. Uh, well, that's not the case. But uh, I wonder how many things we believe are true that aren't. Uh, I mean, just to, to make you question. But I can go through life confident that what's in here is true. Uh, I can know these things. When I teach these things to my kids, uh, nobody will be, ever be able to tell me otherwise. These things are true. Why? Because of the truths of God. And God's word does not change. And he will hold it above. And he will not allow his word to fail. And, and the message this morning, let God be true. Whether you might be justified in your sayings. You ever give somebody counsel? Ladies, you give lots of counsel, don't you? Pick on poor ladies. Men, they never gossip, do they? 
Uh, ladies, you ever get feel? You know, uh, it's amazing how you can influence a friend or someone else by your counsel. If they care about you or they think you're really smart, you're doing a good job pretending. But uh, they, they think you're really smart or whatever, and, and they come to you for advice, and you give them that advice. You realize they go out, and they practice that advice in their life. And if you give them bad advice, uh, you're going to have a part in destroying their lives. Uh, I remember a time when I first came to the church and teaching some things on marriage, and, and uh, you know, this, this smart, brilliant pastor is going to teach all these things. And, and uh, anyway, one couple had a lot of difficulty because of something I taught. Uh, you know, and I had to come to the, the, the face, the truth. It wasn't in the word of God. What was it? It was psychology. It was good to practice things in the home or in the marriage that weren't from the word of God. Uh, well, every marriage isn't the same. Every person isn't the same. Every person doesn't react the same. And uh, uh, the things I can know are true. The word of God, it, it, it taught me early on, I need to stick to the Bible. But, you know, I need to constantly be reminded of that. What, that you might be justified in your sayings. Uh, I want to help people. Uh, I want to uh, see you know people's lives bettered and, and uh, make a difference in their lives. And, and, uh, but, but the things that are in here are the only truths I can count on to do that. Uh, sometimes there's things in the Bible that people ask for your advice or your opinion. You give them the scripture. It's hard to say it. But it's true. Uh, it, it's hard to give that advice. But it's true. And, uh, uh, and it will make a difference in people's lives. And, and it's not what they want to hear. Uh, so what do we do? We want to give them some things they want to hear. Make them happy as they walk away saying, what a great guy. Uh, but later when everything falls apart, you might find that that great is gone. Now they're saying, what a guy. Uh, there's no longer great in it. But you might be justified. The Bible says in your sayings, these things will always prove out to be true. The Bible says in Romans 10, 11, that you will not be ashamed. You will not be ashamed. Uh, you will not be ashamed when you share the things of the word of God. Look at Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah 17. This is the one verse we're going to look at. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 17. Got a whole list of them here, but. And I made the mistake of looking at the clock. So Jeremiah chapter 17. Just two points. You get excited about that. We're just, we started the first point. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse number five. The Bible says in verse five, thus saith the Lord, cursed be the man that trusteth in man. And maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert. Shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not habit, inhabit it. Why? He trusted in man rather than trust in the Lord. He took man's truths rather than God's truths. He came to God's word, and man didn't back it up, and so... He just decided, you know, man's pretty smart. I, I think I'm going to go with man here. Now, this place over here, I'll go with God. But here, I'm going to go with man because man's, man's pretty smart. And you know, the Bible says you should be like the, the hearth and uh, just kind of picture that uh, desert being a uh, creature that's out there crawling around in the desert and, and a hot and dry and miserable place to be able to live. Uh, I wonder why, uh, you know, uh, people would live anywhere besides Coquille, Oregon. I just can't figure it out. I mean, this is such a wonderful place to uh, to, to live, but... Uh, but they do, and, and uh, you know that the Bible says here, he'd be like the heath in the desert shall not see when good cometh. It just won't be a part of their life. There's no blessings. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness and a salt land and not inhabited. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters that spreadeth out her roots by the river, shall not see when heat cometh. But her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Just a comparison between those who trust in man versus those that trust in God. Verse 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. 
anytime we trust in man, man's deceitful uh, and desperately wicked. And uh, when we trust in man, that's that's what we're going to get. You know, most, uh, not most, uh, your your college professors. Uh, how do you ever get a doctorate degree? You go and study books written by men, don't you? Uh, you pass the tests, and they give you a doctorate degree, and everybody calls you doctor, and uh, everybody thinks you're smarter than everybody else, and. I'm for education. Uh, you know, I, I, I praise the Lord that my doctor went to school, aren't you? Uh, they say doctors, you know, uh, they, uh, they're not right all the time either. They don't know everything, but, but the hope is they know a little bit more than you do, so you go to them. And uh, uh, these things are true. And to take and study and to learn and to practice these things, you be justified. Uh, and... Uh, the time will come, it will prove out itself in your life. Today it may not look like it, but it will prove itself out. The Bible says here, Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Happy. I like being happy. Uphold me according to thy word that I may live. Let me not be ashamed of my hope. Psalm 119, 116. That thou mightest be justified in thy sayings. And the Bible says, point number two, thou mightest overcome when thou art judged. Thou mightest overcome when thou art judged. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. There's not a one of us here today that needs to be ashamed. Uh, if we just study the word of God and practice those things. Be a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, as God's given us the truth, we can have it. Uh, there is coming a, a day that our truth will be judged. The things that we lived by, the things that we did, uh, will be judged. Uh, many of those will be judged through natural consequences. Uh, you go out and do something wrong, you know, you, you go out and you jump off a building. Uh, if it's not too high, you're going to break your legs when you hit the ground. Uh, if it's high enough, then that'll be the end. Uh, but uh, you can't defy, you know, uh, gravity. Uh, and, uh, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, there's natural consequences. We don't live by the word of God. We're going we're gonna to have the consequences. People's lives are full of them out in the world. And, uh, uh, you know, when they come to you for counsel, you try to say, well, you know, if you will, I don't want to hear what the Bible says. Uh, I have Sigmund Freud to go to. And uh, why would I need the Bible? Uh, because it's the wonderful wisdom of God. Uh, let God be true. You might be justified when you overcome. There's, there's, there's coming a day in heaven for Christians. It's called the judgment seat of Christ. And uh, I hope for it to be a good day. Uh, the Bible says our works are going to be tried by fire. His word is like a fire. It'll be tried by fire and, and uh, to uh, those things which were of the Lord and for the Lord, he's going to give rewards. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. But those things that are not, the Bible says they're going to suffer loss. I don't know what that loss is. I just know it's going to be miserable. Still going to be saved, but you're going to suffer loss uh, for those things that uh, don't match up to the word of God. Uh, for the lost... Is coming a great white throne judgment. Let God be true. You say, I just can't believe. I can't believe what? That you're a sinner? Uh, I've never met anybody yet that can't believe they're a sinner. Uh, I mean, most people, you, you press them on it, they'll say, oh, yeah, nobody's perfect. Uh, yeah, I've, I've probably done some things that are wrong. That there's a punishment for sin? Go out and break the, break the speed limit and see what happens. Uh, that's a that's a natural part of uh, of man's logic that when you do something wrong, there's consequences. You're going to pay for it. The only problem we have understanding is that God has an eternal payment. The Bible says a place called hell, and He tries to warn us. He says it's better to cut off your arm than to go to that place. Better pluck out your eye than go to that place. It's forever and ever, weeping and gnashing of teeth, 
That's the consequence for our sin. The God who loves us sent his son to die and pay for the price for our sins. That if we would come to him, repent and ask him to save us, the Bible says that he will. That's God's promise. It's written down in the word of God, the truth of God, so that it's sealed for all eternity, uh, that it cannot be broken. Uh, God will uphold his word. He's put it above his name. He will keep every promise that he made in here. And he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Whosoever calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He promised salvation. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, that's man's wisdom, but of incorruptible, of the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. You can know today that you're saved. What keeps you from being saved? Let God be true. It's a decision you must make. Nobody can make you. No one could ever prove it to you. You know what would happen if you said, prove to me the word of God is true. I could show you a proof and you'd say, well, that's not good enough. Show me another. Show me another. Read in Jesus' life. How many times they come to him and say, show us one more miracle. Then we'll believe. He showed them many miracles. He said, which one? said even if one came back from the dead and he did the lord jesus christ says even if one came back from the dead they will not believe uh, your desire to have it proved will never be satisfied because you don't want to believe let god be true the proof is there it's a decision you have to make Let's stand as we have the invitation this morning. Christians, let God be true. We are judged every day according to the truths in the scriptures as we live our life. We pay the consequences for not obeying the word of God. You say, well, I just didn't know. God says, well, I gave it to you. You just didn't open it and read it. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who giveth to all men liberally. And upbraideth not. He's not trying to hide it from you. He wants you to succeed. He wants you to have an abundant life. He wants you to have his truths. That's why he gave them to us. We're just not willing to listen. Let God be true. Heavenly Father, I just ask that you would bless the invitation time today. Lord, this message that we would not, uh, Lord, I'd not forget it soon. I know that the, the condition of my mind is to be forgetful. But Lord, I pray that it would become an engrafted part of my heart. That in, in each situation of my life, I would let you be true. You are true. Uh, but Lord, you gave me a, a free will. And, and with that, a great responsibility. Uh, Lord, that I make decisions every day. Uh, and I'll either let you be true or I'll put my trust in men when I make those decisions. I pray, Father, that your word uh, would be true in my life. I ask, Lord, that you would also just work in the hearts of those that are not saved today. Uh, Lord, that they'd make a decision today to believe you and to trust you. That, Lord, they might be saved. Bless this invitation in Jesus' name. Amen.